It was 4 a.m. and Mr. J. Chan was out and about, prowling his neighborhood. He was looking for Panadol. His wife had suddenly fallen ill, and Mr. Chan was struggling to find a convenience store near his new Tanga flat. He eventually found a 24-hour supermarket that was a 25-minute walk from the Plantation Grange development where he lives. But he only managed to return with the medicine an hour after he left home. It's ridiculous, said the 36-year-old civil servant of the situation. That incident even made him flirt with the thought of getting a personal mobility device in case of emergencies when public transport is not available. Plantation Grange is one of the three projects in Tengra's plantation district that the Housing and Development Board HDB have issued keys for. According to HDB, keys for around 2. 019 out of the 3,753 units in these projects have been collected as of December 5. Presently, the only bus stop in the vicinity for residents there is located near Plantation Acres, which is about a 5 to 10 minute walk from Plantation Grange. Residents said that the closest supermarket and eateries are at Lou Crest Mall, with a food court also nearby at Bukit Batak West Avenue 8. They are four bus stops and around a 10 minute walk away from Plantation Acres, respectively. However, those establishments are not open overnight. This lack of accessible amenities is just one of the concerns that Tengra's early residents raised to today, which also included a lack of transport options. Poor mobile connectivity and the prevalence of dust and mosquitoes. On Wednesday, December 13, HDB said in a statement to the media that Tengra's residents can buy food items and daily necessities from an NTUC Fairprice mobile grocery truck and food vending machines in the estate. The truck operates from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Wednesdays and Fridays every week at the loading bay of Block 111A in Plantation Acres and at the first-story car park near Block 133A at Plantation Grange on Thursdays. The five vending machines are located near the leaf landing of Block 111A. These are part of interim measures to improve accessibility to groceries and daily necessities and enhance residents' convenience while the new town is progressively built up. HDB said. Some residents told today that they appreciated these efforts, but they said that the truck and vending machines do not fully meet their needs. I think the timing of the truck is a bit off. At 3 p.m., everyone's working, not everybody's at home, said 37-year-old preschool teacher Vijay Lakshmi Amathalingam, who moved into her flat at Plantation Grange three months ago. Both Miss Vijay Lakshmi and Mr. Chan said they had managed to visit the mobile truck only once since the initiative started on November 22, as its opening hours did not align with their schedules. There's also not much inside unless you need emergency groceries like rice and eggs. If you want to get other things, it's still better to get them from elsewhere, Miss Vijay Lakshmi added. When today visited Plantation Acres on Friday and Sunday, three of the five vending machines at Block 111A stated that cashless payment was unavailable due to inadequate network coverage. However, the slots to insert coins were also sealed up. Ms. Serene Teo, a 42-year-old corporate secretary who will move into her flat at Plantation Grange before the year ends, said she was concerned about her child's food options after he returns home from primary school next year. There's nothing here, really nothing. Once the kid comes back, then how? We are also working. We have to solve this issue before we move in, she said. For another couple, who wanted to be known only as Mr. and Mrs. Chai, the lack of food options and amenities was expected but still inconvenient. The couple, whose flat in Tenga is currently undergoing renovations, 
added that residents would be more enticed to move in once there are more food options available to them in the vicinity. The option of getting food and groceries via delivery applications is not straightforward either, said some residents who live in Plantation Grange. The road leading to the car park and drop-off point there is currently only accessible via Tanga Boulevard off Tanga Drive and not Plantation Crescent, where the Plantation District's only bus stop is located. Food delivery riders also have difficulties navigating the estate, as the Global Positioning System GPS on online maps has not been updated. Said Mr. Saiful Anwar, a 30-year-old assistant engineer who plans to move into his flat early next year. The GPS issue affects the residents' transport needs, too. Can you imagine if there's an emergency at night? If I want to call a cab? The cab cannot even come, said Mr. Chan. He was first attracted to the developments in Tenga because of the greenery and promise of a car-like neighborhood. Mr. Patrick Lai, a 76-year-old retiree who lives in Plantation Grange, said that he had tried multiple times to book a ride via ride-hailing applications, only to have his ride cancelled after waiting 10 to 15 minutes. The drivers cannot find a place. The GPS will cut off once they reach Tanga Drive, so they don't know where to go, he said. Two new bus services, 992 and 870, were introduced in Tenga on September 24 and November 26 respectively to connect residents to transport hubs and key amenities in Bukit Batak and Jurong East. While some residents were glad that Service 870 was added, others said that getting around via public transport is still a troublesome affair. Several parents bemoaned the bus's lack of connectivity to nearby primary schools. Mr. Ying Chinong, a 56-year-old engineer, said that his son would be enrolling either to Dojong or St. Anthony's Primary School next year. Both schools are less than 3 kilometers or a 5-minute drive away from their home in Tenga. But his son would have to spend 25 to 35 minutes taking two public buses to reach his destination every morning. It's the classic, so near yet so far, Mr. Ng said. A host of other concerns surface in today's conversations with almost 20 Tenga residents about their estate. Chief among them was the issue of dust, which residents said would get into their homes. Mr. Chan, the civil servant, said that he developed rashes soon after moving into his flat and had to buy air purifiers for his home, but he would still leave his windows open for ventilation. Mr. Jonathan Clyde said he and his wife do not intend to open our windows for the next three to four months when they move in next week. Because it's a new area and there's constant construction. There's no way around it, said the 32-year-old who works in sales. HDB said on Wednesday that its contractors have increased the frequency of washing the roads to twice weekly to mitigate the issue of dust arising from ongoing construction works. Some residents are also concerned about the estate potentially breeding mosquitoes. The landscape here is not fully done up and some areas are quite soiled, and this may attract mosquitoes, said a senior bank manager in his 40s who wished to be known only as Mr. Go. There's a ponding of water here whenever it rains, so I think that's a safety issue, especially for a family like ours with young kids. Connectivity is also an issue in several parts of the estate. Indeed, on both of today's visits to the plantation district in Tenga, cellular networks were unpredictable. The reception here is really bad. In my house, there's only one corner that has reception. If my boss wants to call me, he has to call me over Wi-Fi, Mr. Chan quipped. Despite the myriad issues raised, several residents added that they understood that the amenities would take time to build. 
we have to consider that because of COVID-19, all these developments have been delayed for the longest time. So I don't think it's that easy as HDB would have a lot of constraints to set up these amenities. Mr. Goh said, I think a place to stay is more important than amenities. Today has reached out to HDB and Dr. Amy Kaur, who is the Member of Parliament for Hong Kong North Single Member Constituency. For comment.